Hand calculations and computer programs are a big part of engineering, and having a good laptop that can do both can make a huge difference to your time at university. At the start of my second year of uni, I decided to buy a Microsoft Surface Pro 6 and give the whole digital note-taking thing a try. And looking back, I couldn't imagine going through uni without it. Now, the purpose of this video is not to explain the technical aspects of the Surface Pro 6, because there's a lot of people out there who are a lot more capable of explaining those types of things than I am. However, the point of this video is to share how I used the Surface Pro 6 as an engineering student to save time, work more productively, and ultimately get better grades. Okay, so the first thing I want to cover is the two basic accessories I use with my Surface, which is the keyboard and the pen. And yes, these are accessories. In the box, you only get the Surface itself and a charger, so you do need to buy these things separately. Firstly, let's talk about the pen. The pen connects to your laptop using Bluetooth and is powered by a replaceable quadruple A battery that in my experience lasts a really long time. In the last three and a half years since getting the laptop, I've only had to change the battery once and I've used it almost every day. The pen has two buttons, one on the end and one on the tip on the side. And when the pen's not in use, it's stored on the side of your laptop using magnets. The button on the end of the pen, you can set up to do a few different things in settings, but the most useful thing I had it set up to do was to open a new OneNote page. The button near the tip though, acts kind of like a left mouse button and is especially useful inside OneNote. Inside OneNote, by pressing and holding this button, you can lasso things you've already written and easily move them around. And you really don't realize how useful this button is until it's gone. As you might be aware, on an Apple Pencil, there's no button on the side that allows you to do this. So when you want to lasso something, you've got to go up to the menu, click lasso, go back down and circle the thing, move it, and then go up and click pen to start writing again. I found this super annoying when playing around on a few people's iPads and this is something I definitely prefer about the Surface Pro range. Also, I want to mention that within OneNote, the end of the pencil also acts like an eraser, so you can just turn it around and rub things out without having to go up to the menu bar and manually click eraser. Now, I know on an Apple Pencil that you can double click the side of the pen to get to the eraser and then just erase using the pen tip, but I personally feel like turning the pen around and erasing that way feels a lot more natural and isn't as exhausting. Okay, and secondly, the keyboard. The proper name for the keyboard is the Surface Pro type cover and basically it attaches to the bottom of your screen and is powered through your laptop so you don't need to worry about any batteries. The keyboard is pretty similar to any other keyboard but it doesn't have that same solid feel as a traditional laptop because it's able to fold all the way back so you can write on it when it's flat. All right, so the next thing I want to explain is my desk setup. Before lockdowns, when uni classes were actually on campus, I used to only have the Surface, the pen, and the keyboard. And for me, this was completely fine because I had the tutor or professor in front of me and I could note down exactly what I wanted to straight into OneNote on my Surface. But when things shifted fully online, I found that my screen was getting too crowded with all these open windows and I was missing out on information in class when I was switching between apps. For a while, I tried split screening between the live lecture and OneNote, but I found that the screen was just too small to read and write on comfortably. And when restrictions started to get worse and it looked like I'd be spending a lot more time studying from home, I decided to make some changes to my setup. The few things I decided to pick up were an external monitor, a HDMI to HDMI mini cord, and also an external mouse and keyboard set. Also, depending on which Surface you have or you're thinking about getting, make sure you check which HDMI cord you need. For a Surface Pro 6, I needed a HDMI to HDMI mini cord, but I know for the Surface Pro 7 and Surface Pro 8, you need a HDMI to USB-C cord. With the keyboard and mouse set I decided to pick up, I decided to get one that connects to my laptop using a Bluetooth USB transmitter, because I found that this was a relatively cheap way to get a cordless setup going. Now in the next section, I'm gonna show you how I use this setup for no taking during class. All right, so let's get into how I use these new gadgets. So basically the way I would have everything laid out during an online class is that I would have my monitor positioned at the back directly in front of me. It would be connected to my surface via the HDMI cord. I would have the keyboard behind it and I would have the mouse off to the right. Also in the settings on my surface, I would set up the external display so that it was extended directly above my surface screen. Having things set up like this allowed me to put the lecture up on the external screen and have the full screen of the surface as a note taking pad. And by having the external mouse and keyboard there, it made it very easy for me to type out any questions and also take any screenshots so I could paste them straight into my notes. What I was kind of trying to achieve with my setup is to have things as close as possible to what they would have been like in person, which is having the thing that's being presented out in front of you and then having your notepad down on the table. By spreading out over two screens, I could get pretty close to this and also got some added bonuses like being able to screenshot the working out that's being done in the live lecture and pasting it straight into my notes. 
All right, the next thing I wanna cover is how I used the Surface when I could actually go into uni. Essentially, 99% of the time, I would have the keyboard folded back underneath and have the screen angled back at a position that was comfortable for me to write on. And the other 1% of the time where I'd use it differently is in something like a lab when I'd remove the keyboard or fold it completely back turn it portrait and just write on it while standing. In either of these use cases, when I wanted to get a quick photo of something, I just used the camera on the back of the surface, which surprisingly takes good enough photos when you just want to add a quick photo into your notes. Times when I'd actually use the camera is when the lecture is written too fast and I want to take a quick photo just so I have a copy of it. And also when the lecturer might hand out a paper copy and I want to take a photo and then write on it within one note. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is the Surface Pro's compatibility with engineering computer programs. So another one of the reasons I decided to go with the Surface as opposed to an Apple Mac or iPad is that it runs on the Windows operating system. As an engineering student, you're required to use a lot of different design and computer programs. And a lot of these programs you're able to get on your personal laptop through a special student license. And a lot of them just aren't available and compatible with Mac OS or iPad OS. For me, having access to these programs whenever I need them without having to go to a computer lab or find a computer in the library that has the program on it I wanna use was something I definitely considered when choosing this laptop and was a huge lifesaver when I started studying from home full time. Although Surface Pros aren't well known for their computing power, I found that for all the design programs I was using, it performed perfectly well for all those projects. A few of the programs I was using on my Surface was Space Gas, Strand 7, AutoCAD and Plaxus 2D. All right, so that brings me to the end of exactly how I used my Surface Pro as an engineering student. Hopefully after that discussion, you can see how my Surface benefited me. And if you're thinking about getting one, how one would benefit you too. Also, if you're interested in learning about the full note-taking process that I used at university that helped me to consistently master the courses I was doing, check out this video I made here on my full note-taking process. And if you wanna learn about some of the design tasks I do as a graduate structural engineer, check out this video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.